Hey everyone, it's Ali Corum here. Now we had two-time U.S. investing champion Mark Minervini on IBD Live, and we covered a lot of ground with him. My favorite part of the show was when we talked about medical stock Lanthius because Mark reviewed a lot of his different strategies from how he handles earnings season, position sizing, adding, and where he's taking profits. So take a look. Let's take a look at LNTH Lanthius, which you mentioned as being a strong can slim style stock, has earnings coming up. And Anonymous is asking your policy on earnings, what type of profit cushion, um, how you determine whether you're going to hold, how much of the position you're going to hold into earnings. Okay. Well, I have a one general rule that I'm never going to hold a really large position and take a lot of risk. Uh, going into an important report, unless I have a cushion. So that cushion, uh, you know, de de depends on the volatility. But uh, you can look at the options market. You know, there is a formula that we uh, uh, we use to uh, get the implied volatility, and it's pretty for the stocks that are widely followed. It's pretty accurate. You'd be amazed at how close it can come, uh, and it'll, it'll give you a range of you know where where that's going to trade. So if you know if that's saying it's going to move you know 10 percent in either direction that's a pretty volatile stock as opposed to something that might say it's a three percent move so uh, again i'm looking <clears throat> with this name i'm profitable on it i'm up i think we're up about 10 or 12 percent on it so i do have a cushion to go into earnings um and we're going to try to go into earnings on this we are going to go into earnings on this as long as it holds up today um so again that that's basically my general rule is to have some type of cushion and that depends on your own risk tolerance and also you can position size accordingly you know if, if you're going to go into an earnings report uh then you might want to cut your position size based on you know your worst case scenario and you know, what you're willing mm -hmm. to risk mm -hmm. so with with the profit cushion that you have where were you getting in on a the bounce off of the 50 day or um we got in on 715 715 so <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay so yeah. uh talk about the i guess the conviction that you have to have if you see you know the following day the stock down five percent is that where you look at where it's trading in relation to those shorter term moving averages to keep you in so, so that one day, you know, you have to be careful of getting shaken out of a stock. If you have, you know, the very next day or a couple of days later, you get a, you know, you maybe get an outside day, you get a pullback, you get a reversal. Um, you know, when I go into a trade, I've already determined my, my amount of risk, my level of risk. So I already know where I'm getting out before right. I get in. So with this particular situation, you know, I had not hit my stop yet. So until the stock becomes profitable, I'm going to stick with that original stop because, and, and again, you know, if, if all of a sudden you're getting spooked out of the, of, of a trade, um, then you probably oversized it. You know, you did so, you know, your, your original risk plan wasn't really that sound because if it was, if you went in there and said, Hey, I'm going to buy this at a hundred and at 95, I'm out. And now you're selling it at 99 on one little pullback. Um, then again, you know, you're, you're not sticking to your plan. Uh, and whether your plan was good or not, you know, that that's a different story, but you need to have a plan, stick to the plan, assess it, and then come up with a new plan maybe later on. But so I've already made that decision. Now, if the stock is giving me ominous signs, which it's kind of hard to get an ominous sign in one day, unless it really was a huge outside day and really had gigantic volume. And most likely then it would probably hit my stop. So you know, I, I, I'm looking for confirmations and violations subsequent to a breakout. And one day usually isn't enough, one or two days to tell me that the stock's not, you know, not acting right, that it's acting ominous. So I would just stick with my original stop at that point, which that's what we did. And then of course you can see two days later, it recovered, got back into new high ground, and then it pulled back again. You had three or four days pulled yeah. back two two or three days later, you're back in new high ground again. And now it's built up a cushion enough where I'm able to go into earnings and play it for a bigger move. And if I'm wrong, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably going to, you know, break even on this trade or not lose much money because I'm already profitable. Yeah. Now, Mark, something that we've uh, talked with you about previously is um, when you're adding to a position, you want to see a new proper entry. Of course, you know, th this one hasn't had a lot of time to set up another entry heading into the earnings report. Uh, but also when you've been on the, in the past, you've talked about taking a partial profit relatively quickly when you, when you have an ice game to pay for that trade, mm -hmm. is it current conditions that have, uh, allowed you to 
uh, maybe not be so quick to taking partial profits? Have you taken partial uh, profits here? Of course, earnings now factors into the scenario, uh, but how should we be thinking about that? Do you feel like improving conditions are leading you to maybe handle positions a little differently or not yet? Okay, so you brought up two points. For, um, first, you started off with, you know, basically scaling in or, or adding to the position. And so I'm almost always adding at, an, at a new buy point or a new pivot point. So I want to see the stock reset um, and, <clears throat> and, and buy at a new pivot point. This one's a perfect example on 715, where I originally bought it, of course, was, a, was the first pivot point. And then another add-on would be around 727, 728 when it broke out and the base fully formed. Now, again, it's moved sideways a bit here. Again, if it started turning up from here, that would be another maybe potential add-on. I would add less though, because I don't want to run my average cost up. But um, now some like David Ryan, you know, he'll start a position sometimes in the, in the, in the morning, right. Or, or maybe in, you know, in the late morning, early afternoon, and maybe he'll start a smaller position. But now if that stock has a good close, you get into the close and it starts closing strong, he might move his full position there. That's something that him and I have talked about. And we've talked to uh, people at the Mass Trader Program about of another technique of sort of, you know, using incremental or progressive exposure. But again, that would be within the confines of not chasing it up too far. It would still would be not, not an extended stock. So those are sort of the differentiations of, you know, the way I would generally do it, or maybe David Ryan would do it. And I would do it the way David does it also. I might start a small position. And then if it's acting well throughout the day, I'll add to it but and I'm not chasing it up, of course. So that's 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 the first thing. The second thing you're talking about is is financing risk. Yeah. So and you're you're asking about this particular environment. So going back for the last year and a half, it's been an environment that if you were a short term trader and you were buying breakouts and selling them into the first pop in the first few days, you could have made a fortune. This has been it's been a very odd environment because you've gotten lots of stocks that have broken out of bases that you would normally be buying as a swing trader or a longer term investor, but they just never followed through. So if you if you if you use the buy rules on the the, the swing sort of buy rules, which I only buy from, but the sell rules were short term sell rules. That's how. That's how I did it in, in 2021 and got the return for the U.S. investing championship was I just traded out of everything into strength. Yeah. I think I call I term that the pop and drop uh, environment. I think we're still kind of in that, you know, as much as, you know, back then we went into November topped and everything rolled over and we went into a bear market. Maybe maybe that's not going to be the outcome here, but you are getting a lot of stocks. They pop, then they come back in, and there's a lot of volatility. And now, you, if you want to go through that volatility, that's fine. But you know, I, I'm going to cut my loss, so that volatility is not my friend. So I'm trying to cut it off. So the, the, what what you're asking was about financing risk, and that is where you can also you can also play that sort of in the middle, where now you take a position, it pops, you sell a portion of it. Uh, equal to your risk, mm -hmm. and now you're free rolling. So stock pops, you know, ten percent or eight. Let's say eight percent today, um, and you have a stop at eight percent. If you sell half your position, well, you can give it the full stop. You can give it that eight percent, and you're just going to break even. So in this type of environment, yes, I'd be looking to finance my risk and play that safe that 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 make that safe bet until I start seeing that follow through, and then I don't want to do that anymore. Now I want to go all in and I wanna hold for bigger moves. So not only can those strategies be applied to Lanthius, but other stocks investors are looking at buying. So a lot of great tips there for your toolbox. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all the latest, including more clips from seasoned traders and how they are handling their buys and sells and so much more. See you next time.